guys, it's Lynn here, the cosplayer from Seattle, Washington, and I am back again to finally do a new video. I am not going to lie, my summer of 2020 has been just really, really super boring with nothing exciting going on except for working on Elderwood Aubrey in the background. So when I'm not at work, I'm usually at home crafting or ordering new supplies on Amazon or drawing up new designs for this costume. And right now it's about 75% complete. Um, the only thing left is the top of the Elder Woodari costume. So until then, I don't want to show you guys anything because I want to do a whole video where I'm going to like show how I made it and talk in depth about it and show you all the details. So stick around for that if you're interested in watching. Today's video instead is going to be just for your entertainment and so you can kind of cringe along with my story and understand some of my struggles. And today I'm going to be telling you guys the story of how I tried to become a freelance makeup artist and everything that pretty much went wrong. So if you guys are cosplayers out there or models or you just like to have your makeup done all fancy for events, please thank your makeup artists and hug them because they go through so much crap and the industry is really, really tough on them. And I'm going to kind of touch base on all of this stuff, but I think some people don't consider makeup artists to be like real artists, which I think is really stupid, um, considering you not only have to know how to like draw and paint well and fill in the lines well, but you also have to know how to blend really well. And you have to know how to do that on many different skin types and also make people feel really good about themselves. Like when you paint something on a canvas, the canvas isn't you know, asking you to paint it a certain way and it's not giving you feedback or criteria you need to meet. But when you're doing makeup on someone, they are. So that already kind of makes it a little bit more stressful and a little bit more anxiety inducing when you're doing it. Um, okay, so this story time is actually really, really super detailed. So there's a few things I'm gonna gloss over, but I will tell you guys the backstory of when this all started. So. Have I always done makeup? No, no, I have not. And if you guys have watched my old videos, I talk about how the first time I ever went to a cosplay convention, I was about 15 years old. Um, I didn't even wear a costume. I think I actually wore Ugg boots because it was mid 2000s and that was kind of cool then. And let's just say at that time in my life, the only thing I knew how to apply was mascara and that included like smearing it all over my face. And I had no clue how to put on lipstick. I had no clue how to put on eyeshadow. Like I could maybe do concealer and, you know, being a teenager with lots of acne, I tried my best, but let's just say wasn't a great look like in high school. I started to get really interested in makeup actually my senior year of high school. And that was because I started taking photography. And with my photography class, we were given themes each week that we had to do a set of photos on, explaining why we thought these photos fit the theme. And my favorite thing to take pictures of was actually people. Um, being a cosplayer and getting my own photo taken, I just like having the person in my photo being like the center of focus and getting them to do different things and capturing different angles of them. And it's just like a lot of fun and movement. And so with that, I started doing my friend's hair and makeup. So I couldn't really reuse models in the class. So I ended up meeting a lot of people that way too, asking them to be my models for things. Um, and the more that I started doing photography, the more makeup I started applying on them. And so I had to get better and better. I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials. Um, at the same time, I was already watching a lot of cosplay tutorials. So it kind of just like went hand in hand, I guess. And the more and more I practiced, the better and better I started getting at it. And not only that, I realized I was having a really fun time doing it. And I felt like this weird creative window in my life open up. So like when you discover a new creative hobby, sometimes it feels like a spark, like inside of you, like it makes you super excited because you're just like being introduced into that type of hobby world. And there's so much to learn and so many different variations. And that's pretty much what makeup is. You can do everything from glamour type makeup, everyday life type makeup, fantasy makeup, costume makeup, like there's so much out there. And you don't have to specialize in it all, um, but you can test out the waters and see like what you're good at doing or what you like experimenting with. Um, and the fun thing about makeup is you make a million mistakes, but every time you make a mistake, you kind of learn from it. 
So it was just like my mindset going into it was like, this is fun and interesting and I'm super excited. So once I turned about 19 years old, this is around the time that most of my friends were going to college. And unfortunately, my life circumstances didn't let me go to school. I was one of the um, people out there who unfortunately had to focus mostly on work in order to survive, pay rent, pay bills, that sort of thing. And school was kind of something that I had to push off because I just didn't have the funds or the safety net to do it at the time. So in my free time, I still painted a lot. I still created cosplay costumes and did a lot of sewing. Um, I did a lot of makeup art. And pretty much that year, I think it was about 2011 to 12, somewhere around there, I started realizing that I really wanted to go to school for something. And the more I thought about it, the more the idea of being a makeup artist just like kept coming up in my head. Um, it was something that I could definitely see myself doing every single day. I love the creative freedom that came with it. I love making people feel good about themselves. Like that's the best part of being a makeup artist is when you hand someone a mirror and they look at themselves and think, oh my God, I'm beautiful. Like that feeling of like you made someone else happy with your skill is, it's amazing and it feels so, so good. That's like the best part of it. Um, so I decided that I wanted to kind of look into schools to think about, should I go to makeup school? Should I go to like skincare school? And this is an entire story in and of itself, but I did go to aesthetic school and I did graduate, but I didn't get my aesthetics license. And this is a story I wanna save for another time because unfortunately my school story was not great. And of course, I'm not going to name any names, but I will just say that the school I went to was not a great place. Um, so in my free time, while I was going to aesthetic school though, I decided to go online and decide, you know what? I really need to like network myself. I need to meet more people in the beauty industry. And I really want to get like a really good portfolio of pictures together. And there's only so many pictures I can take myself. I need to find other photographers that are out there. So what I did is I actually went online and I would go on Craigslist and I would look up all the different advertisements in my area of people that were looking for makeup artists. Now, because I was so new and my portfolio was so small, most of the time I never got responses back. But then I found a group, a meetup group, that was actually looking specifically for makeup artists to come to their meetups and they would um, pay like a small fee for it. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna apply. So I put in my little portfolio that I had of like my friend's makeup and myself. Um, I wrote a little bit of interesting you know, pieces of, you know, whatever about my life that I like to draw, that I like to paint, that I was really into makeup, but I was a baby in the industry, um, that I was looking for somewhere to just like get more real life experience. And guess what? I got an email back from the coordinator who said, we would love to have you. Um, I love your work and I really love your passion. So I ended up being a part of this freelance makeup, modeling, and photography group. So the way that this group worked was the coordinator would actually rent out a location, whether it be a building, an outside area, part of a park, something like that, and would coordinate so that everyone would show up at the same time on the same day for the same event and we would have like a, a limited amount of time there. So the way this worked for everyone involved was the photographers had to pay a small fee to come because they were using the models as kind of their, um, what do you call it? Like something free for their portfolio. And we were utilizing makeup artists to make sure those models looked good. So for the photographers, they were gonna get um, free work out of this. They don't have to you know, pay a model or pay a makeup artist to show up at their location. They're getting to go on location somewhere really cool and get to utilize all these services. For the models, they would sign up online and it didn't cost them anything. Um, and also they didn't get paid for it because they were also getting free portfolio work. So it's kind of like trade for pictures. Um, if you guys have ever heard that term, it's pretty much when you are starting out as like a makeup artist, a lot of people do this thing called trade for pictures where you meet up with a model and a photographer and everyone does their work. And at the end, everyone gets copies of all the images with the rights to them so that you can put them in your portfolio and it kind of builds you up and makes you look more professional. 
Well, with the makeup artists in this group, they were extremely professional and kind to and made sure that we got paid, even though it was a small fee. Because again, as makeup artists, we actually have to bring our own makeup supplies and everything and show up on location. And makeup is expensive, especially the really nice makeup. So at the time, I thought this was like the coolest thing ever. Um, I remember going to my very first event and I had like my um, makeup case in one hand and I had like a foldy chair in the other hand and I had a big bag of like cleaning supplies and organizational supplies with me and I was like shaking because I was so scared. Um, and it was funny too because I had watched a lot of YouTube on makeup artists and at the same time I was going to aesthetic school. So I actually ended up going there looking like one of the most professional makeup artists because I had, I was wearing all black, which I told was the most professional look. And also I had like a little apron on that I could put my brushes in and I had little cleansers and I was just like ready to go. Um, this is something that's really cool about doing makeup art is like so much of it today you can just learn online. You can watch tutorials on YouTube you can watch makeup artists work and kind of pick up from like what they're doing. And also you get to hear everyone's really bad reviews of bad makeup artists. You learn what not to do. Um, when I was first doing this, I don't think it was quite as popular um, online to talk about your experience as a makeup artist. So I kind of had to just learn along the way. But aesthetic school actually taught me a lot about sanitizing, about how to socialize with your client and also how to problem solve because a lot of things that come up in doing makeup art is the client telling you they want to look a certain way or they want a certain feature popping or hidden and you have to kind of decipher what they're trying to tell you and that can be really really hard because for one person glamour makeup might be a different shade of lipstick or lip gloss than they're used to and falsies and for a whole nother person it might be an entire full airbrush set of makeup with heavy eyeliner and totally enhanced features so it's like you really really have to narrow it down especially before you get started because there is nothing worse than doing a full face of someone's makeup and then having them look in the mirror and be like i don't like it take it off and redo it so after the first event i felt really really good um I felt like this was opening this door into this creative world. And also by every event that I went to, I was meeting photographers, I was meeting models, I was seeing how photographers work, I was getting ideas for things. Like there was just so much going on, so much learning going on inside my head. Um, so pretty much these events would be about once every month, every other month. And after about a year and a half of doing them, is kind of when I had my list of things I was not liking and slowly and slowly that list was getting bigger and bigger. So I do wanna talk about the negatives that I experienced in this beauty industry and um, I wanna be really honest and really just blunt with you guys because I don't want you guys to be seeing this thinking, I wanna go into makeup art because I love to do cosplay makeup and not know the reality of it. Um, not that I wanna scare you guys away. The beauty industry is definitely a very thriving industry. I mean, everyone likes to look beautiful and feel good, but there's just many things people don't realize until they're actually like working in it. Um, so at the same time that I was doing this group, I was also offering my services for cosplay events where I would actually go to hotels in downtown Seattle and do makeup for people that were going to like Emerald City Comic Con or Soccer Con and it was just kind of like a cool way to make a little bit of extra side money and also talk to people and get them to refer me to their friends and um, I also was doing a lot of makeup for my friends that were going to weddings because now that I was in my early 20s, it was, you know, a lot of people get married very young. And so I had a lot of girlfriends that wanted their makeup and hair and falsies put on for weddings. And so kind of here and there, I was like doing little things, but by no means professional and by no means was I making any amount of money to sustain myself. So that's the number one thing I want you guys to know about the makeup industry. There is a reason why makeup artists charge so much money is because our makeup kits are hella expensive. Um, a good mascara costs about $40. Let me put that into perspective for you. Now, if you are doing this on clients, you not only need an entire thing of makeup supplies, 
You need it in like every shade and color you can possibly think of for every type of skin and every skin tone and every situation you could run into where you might need like a certain product for someone. And not only do you need all of that, but you also need to be able to afford to get disposable tools like mascara wands and lip gloss wands um, to keep your kit sanitized. You never ever double dip and you never dip the original applicator into something and use it on a client. You always have disposable everything. Um, and those do add up, unfortunately, if you're doing a lot of events. And plus not only that, you also need sanitizing spray, makeup wash, and the ability to literally go home and like clean everything after you're done, which also takes extra time. So this is a lot of costs that really, really add up. And this is why a lot of makeup artists charge, you know, between a hundred to $200 an hour for makeup because the products that they're putting on your face are the best of the best. And like any artist, I want to use really professional products because I want my clients to have long lasting makeup that looks good, that they're not going to have smudged mascara, you know, two hours into their event, that they're going to be able to go to that convention all day and still have dewy skin by the end of the day. And unfortunately that just costs a lot of money. So that is the first con I want to talk about is that many people when they're starting in the makeup industry are undercharging just because they are baby new to the industry. It's what I did. And unfortunately they find themselves in a deficit at some point where they're spending more money on their makeup kit than they are getting paid at events. And the longer it goes on, the worse and worse it gets, unless you're able to really build up that network and that portfolio and be able to charge more and more as you go. Okay, the second thing I want to just tell you guys about doing makeup, especially at events where there are multiple makeup artists, is that unfortunately also, the beauty industry is highly competitive. Um, so I kind of went into this thinking, going to all these networking events, not only would I make friends with the photographers and um, the models, but I would also make friends with other makeup artists and get some tips and tricks from them and like learn from them. But unfortunately, after my second event, I learned very, very quickly that the makeup artists there wanted nothing to do with me. No matter how kind and polite I asked, or no matter how much I tried to be friendly and make small talk or conversation with them or compliment them, the most I ever got was maybe little quick two to three word sentences and thanks and walking away, rolling up eyes, or just completely ignoring me 100%. Um, so I just wanna tell you guys that this is an industry where because there's so much competition, many people feel like they can't be kind to you or they can't be polite to you. And so it's kind of like you have to have a little bit of a thicker skin in order to work as a makeup artist because there are going to be many other makeup artists that are going to be mean to you. And it's just this really unfortunate reality, but I don't like, I just want to be honest with you guys about that. Um, I know that there's many parts of the makeup industry where people make friends, but I found that a lot of people that were friends at these events were not actually close friends. They were almost like fake friends where they were very fake, nice to each other, where they talked a lot about makeup products, about beauty products, about events. But at the same time, they weren't very nice people and they aren't what I would consider to be a friend or a confidant. I just felt like they were not like real, I guess. Um, okay. Let's talk about number three that I learned. And number three, I think, is something you will find in any industry, but unfortunately, because you are doing makeup art on a client or a model, you have to get their satisfaction from doing the makeup service. So the third thing that I found that I really didn't like about being a freelance makeup artist is that I was working with very unprofessional models a lot of the time. Now, when I was doing this meetup group, one of the things was that the models that were showing up for it, um, it was kind of like a free for all. You just apply, you say why you wanna do it, they accept you and you show up. If you if you sign up for an event and you didn't show up, they would pretty much just like kick you out and not invite you to new ones because they're not gonna waste time and energy emailing you every time if you're not actually coming to the events. 
And for models, part of the industry is you have to be able to show up early or, you know, really well on time. You have to be able to communicate well and you have to be able to follow directions well. So if models can't do those three things, they will not make it in the industry at all. For me, I found a couple different things that happened with models that really, really irked me. And when I tried to talk to people about it, I felt like it just fell a little flat, almost like, oh no, this, yeah, that happens all the time. Uh, yeah, there's nothing we can really do about it. Um, so one of the things that happened was models coming up and trying to touch my makeup supplies when I wasn't close by them. And this would be like at an event and I would follow maybe one of my models to a certain area of the location while the photographer was doing something. So then if they needed something, they needed a touch up um, or whatever, I could kind of watch them take the pictures and also I could provide touch ups if needed so they didn't have to come back to my workspace. But there were so many times I went back to my workspace and there was a model sitting in my chair with my mirror, putting my makeup on her face, touching my tools that weren't even sanitized and me being like, what are you doing? Uh, put that down, please. Like, please don't touch my stuff. Um, it also made me really nervous because I knew of a couple other makeup artists that had their supplies um, stolen or messed with. And it was never determined if they were models doing it, it if it was other makeup artists kind of like trying to self-sabotage these people um, or like what was going on. But it made me just really, really nervous. Like, I don't want people touching my stuff. For one, it's not sanitary at all. Like no one should be handling my stuff but me. And two, it's super impolite. Like that's my expensive makeup. Don't be taking that mascara and just sticking the wand right on your lashes because now I have to throw out that entire $40 tube. So like that made me very, very pissed off. I didn't like it. And when I would try to communicate to the people that were doing that, like, hey, don't do that, it's not okay. They seemed like confused, like, oh, sorry, yeah, I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to do that. Like, what, what? I like, you don't go up to people and you don't touch someone else's purse or, you know, try on their shoes or like weird stuff like that. Like you don't put on someone else's makeup. It's just very strange. Um, and you would think with them being models, they would respect the makeup artist's property and their space. Um, but I just found more and more events I was doing, a lot of people didn't. And it was like, I don't know, kind of shocking to me. Um, the second thing I had happen with models, and this is one very specific event I remember in my head, but I'm very sure if I kept doing makeup art for longer, um, this would have happened over and over. But I had a model who was a little bit on the older side. Um, so not old by any means, but in the modeling industry, like, early to mid twenties is kind of where most models start. And this model had started in her early twenties, took a break when she got married and had a family and then came back in her mid thirties. So she was about 35 or 36. And when she sat down in my chair, she complained that she had a lot of wrinkles on her face and she wanted them all hidden. So think crow's feet, lines around the mouth, lines around the forehead, um, lines around the brow bone. And I have to be, I don't want to be mean here, but I'm going to be quite honest. There are some things makeup just can't hide. And one of them is texture. When a wrinkle is very, very deep set and has been there for a while, it gets harder and harder to hide it. And there's things that you can do to kind of detract from those wrinkles. Um, you can make their skin look dewier. You can put a lot more highlights in. You can make their eyes very, very enhanced. But in the end, it's kind of up to the photographer to do the retouching to make sure that those wrinkles don't end up in their final photos. So once I had communicated with her what she wanted, I did her makeup, I thought it looked really awesome. She took a look in the mirror and then instantly started complaining. I can still see my wrinkles. You didn't get rid of them at all. Do you even know what you're doing? This is not good makeup, which totally broke my heart because I thought, okay, well, I'll explain to her. So I, I talked to her and I said, well, I noticed you have, um, you know, some wrinkles around your mouth and things like that. And unfortunately, because when you smile and when you move your head up and down, those muscles over time, because of that movement, will cause you to get wrinkles. And unfortunately, you're going to be doing more movements with your face. So even if I put as much 
foundation and cover up and primer on you, it can't totally hide them. What you're gonna wanna do is just tell the photographer you're a little bit self-conscious about them. If they could touch that up, that would be awesome at the end of your photos. And she did not like this answer. She thought I was lying. She thought I wasn't a good makeup artist and that's why I couldn't hide them. And so she went on her merry way to go find a different makeup artist at the event. And it really made me upset, especially because um, I smelled cigarette smoke on her breath. And it's very, very unprofessional to get into a makeup artist chair and just reek of an odor, especially cigarette smoke. It goes on your coat and your shirt and it's in your hair, it's in your mouth. And when I try to do someone's makeup and I'm up close, the last thing I want is like cigarette breath coming out at me. Um, but even worse than that, especially models should know this, but taking good care of your skin also means having good oral health because smoking actually causes premature aging and wrinkles because of the nicotine in the cigarettes. Um, so for any of you guys out there that are smokers, be aware of that. That is something that they teach you in aesthetic school, but a lot of people don't know this. So I didn't want to be rude and mention that to her. I actually saw her smoking twice at the event, but I didn't want to be rude and say, hey, you might want to cut back on the cigarettes because guess what? Those mouth lines is because of that cigarette in your hand right now. Um, but you know, unprofessional models are really, really hard to deal with. And sometimes you literally have to put your stuff down and leave an event. I've heard other makeup artists say this, that they literally had to grab all of their equipment and just leave because no matter what they did, the model or client wasn't happy. And can you imagine getting up early in the morning, having totally clean supplies, driving however long to an on-location event, doing the makeup, and then your client's not happy so you don't even get paid. That should never happen to a makeup artist. And why does that happen all the time then? Okay, and the last thing I wanna tell you guys about, and this is the reason that kind of like broke the camel's back that made it so I decided I just didn't wanna be a freelance makeup artist anymore, was no matter how many events I went to and how much networking I did, 99% of the time, the texts or phone calls or Facebook messages I was getting were requesting free services, which is never okay in any aspect to ask any artist to give you a free service, whether they're brand new, um, whether they're offering to do free services, you should be compensating them in some way. There is no trades anymore where you can just trade one thing for another unless the artist specifically says they are looking to trade for a certain thing and you just so happen to offer whatever thing that is make a deal with them but don't ask people for free services um, especially makeup artists it puts us in a really really awkward position because again the freelance makeup group that i was working for for the models for them it was free to get makeup done and it was free to get their picture taken because the coordinator was paying the makeup artist and the photographers were paying the coordinator. However, I am not going to do free services on a model just to get exposure because 99% of the time there is no exposure that even comes from that. And when you do get exposure, guess what? It's for more free services because whatever you are offering is what people are gonna reach out to you for. So the more of these freelance group meetups that I did, um, I started to just get so many models afterwards, like up to six or seven people messaging me, and they would always start off very professional, very kind, complimenting my work, saying they really liked whatever makeup or body paint or whatever I did that day. Um, but then when talk came up about the cost or my hourly rate or travel fees, whatever it was, anything that had to do with money, they either got really upset and said, you know, I thought we were doing this for trade for pictures or for free, or I thought you wanted exposure. You don't have a big enough portfolio. You're very new to the industry. So this is very normal. Like trying to tell me what's normal when they're not even a, a makeup artist or they would just stop messaging me completely and a lot of times would block me or ignore me. And honestly, I preferred that over trying to fight with someone about why I couldn't offer a free service or why I couldn't offer a service for less than a certain amount of money. Uh, sometimes people would offer to pay me like a bare minimum, like I'll pay your gas money, I'll pay for your coffee, I'll pay for this or that. And I was like insulted by that because I thought, oh my God, you're not even paying for the makeup that I'm using out of my kit. You want to pay gas money for me to come and do this? Why Why do you think I'd want to do this? I want this to be a profession, not something that like 
I'm getting thrown peanuts at for doing. And um, so after a while, I started going to less and less meetups. And then I started only doing private events where only um, people that reached out to me that were willing to pay my hourly rate. And I would go do like cosplay makeup or sometimes friends of friends, weddings, things like that. And slowly and slowly, I just realized that makeup art was really not for me. As much as I love to do makeup, I love to help my friends out. I have shown so many girls the correct way to put on false eyelashes and make themselves feel really good. Um, you know, I've done a lot of people's makeup that hardly ever wear makeup and that very shocked, surprised look on their face when they finally see themselves with like liquid eyeliner on. It feels really good, but it's not something I can make into a career. Um, I thought... For a long time, the beauty industry is where I really wanted to work, but it turns out I love to do makeup art. I just don't love to do it as a profession, and that's okay. Um, I think this is a message a lot of cosplayers need to hear, is that you can have a hobby that you absolutely love and adore, it can be your total passion in life, but it does not mean that it needs to make you money or it needs to be a career choice in your life. Um, I know many cosplayers and costumers and photographers that all do it in their free time because that's what keeps the spark and flame alive. Um, and that's actually really good. I think that's really healthy for like work-life balance. Go and do work that you feel really good about and, you know, find a career that you feel good about, but also have your fun, passionate hobbies that you can go do. I think that having that balance is really what truly makes you feel good about your life and just to have like a good life experience in general. So anyways, I'm going to end the story time here, guys. If you've made it this far, good job. It's like 30 minutes in. It's a really long story. But I hope it gave you some insight into the beauty world. And the next time you go and hire a makeup artist or go to a spa and get your um, makeup done by an artist there, make sure to thank them extra hard. Make sure to give them extra tips. Uh, God, they deal with so many clients that you would not even believe, like the things that I have heard said. Um, but most makeup artists love what they do and it's their passion and they are there to make you feel good and to make you feel happy. So just remember that. Anyways, I'll see you guys back here again for another video. So stick around and you'll see that. And uh, have a good night, guys.